All right, so it's Friday. I'm out here at Moraga Country Club. Today's just gonna be a range session because there are no spots on the course since it, since it just rained and it has been raining for like the past week. Um, everyone's out here today because it's just it's just a perfect day. But doesn't mean I still can't get good practice in. And I'm just gonna be on the range talking to you guys. And uh, I do have some questions uh, about how I practice, so I'll also be answering those. Uh, stick around for that if you want to learn how to how to practice a little bit better. It's just short, but it's all right. Yeah, so I haven't been practicing a lot, mainly because I've been completely swamped by projects in school. All my tests are going to be next week, but this week was just my fucking five projects. All my projects are done. So for two of my projects, I got a 95 on them. And then for the third one in the same class, the professor came up to me after the class or after our presentation. And he wanted to use our, uh, our presentation slides as a model for next year. I don't know about you guys, but I think that means it's a good sign. I believe one of the questions was uh, like how I practice or like some drills on the range and like what I look at as I'm over the ball. I know that one for sure. So I know one of them is uh, what I'm thinking of as I am over the ball, pretty much. I'm just trying to aim at the smallest target I could find and uh, just focus all of my attention there. I'm not trying to focus on swing or any technical stuff. I'm just trying to trust all the practice I've done and just focus my attention on the ball getting there. Okay, so for example, if my target was the red flag over there, then when I'm over the ball, all I'm thinking about is just the red flag and just trying to pinpoint exactly where I want it to land. And I'm also, the reason why you want to make it as small as possible is because the smaller the target you pick, the smaller your misses become. The second question I was asked was, um, what are some drills that I do on the range and when I practice, maybe chipping or even putting? I'm pretty much just trying to go for every target. I'll make it a game where I'll pick, let's say I'm starting with this green one in the shadow, try and hit it. If I hit it, I move on to the next one, which is the orange. Try to hit it again. If I hit it, then move on. Keep doing that until I hit all of the flags. Like and subscribe. Yes. If you miss a green, then you stay at that green. But instead of just hitting it once this time, you have to hit it twice. If you miss again, you have to hit it three times. So just keep doing that until you try and get it all. It's actually pretty hard, especially with like like the 231 or even even with some of these uh, like 50 yard ones, because those are pretty hard to gauge of how far you want to go, especially with like your swing here. But uh, that just helps you get better. All right, so for that one, it was short. So now I have to hit two at the green one and they have to be in a row. So that one was good. And I have to do it again with this one. You can obviously tailor it to your skill set. Like if you're still a beginner, then I don't, I don't think you're ever gonna pass this, <laughs> pass this game. But you could change it to where it's like, just keep going at the flag until you hit it. If you're first starting out. Another game you could play. This is more intermediate, advanced. I'd say this is more intermediate game. Where, like, let's say I have my eight iron here. This should go to the red flag. I want to practice my shot shaping. I'd make it to where you have to hit a cut and, you only, and you're only allowed to land it on the left side of the flag. And if you go to the right, then it doesn't count. And obviously you can play this with your friends. For this one, you have to hit a draw. And it has to land on the right side of the red flag, but it has to also hit the green. But let's say you hit your goal and you hit the right side of the green, and then you would get one point. 
If you miss the green but it's still on the right side, you would get zero points. And if you miss it on the left side, then you get minus one. Keep playing that, you can play that with your friends and then first to 10 or something like that. But loser has to do something. You also wanna keep that pressure situation as much as you can. Making it fun with friends is also good. Yeah, there is so many people right now. I feel so weird talking to myself. I always forget how weird it is to talk in front of, to just talk to a camera when you're out in public. But this is good. This is exposure therapy. You just keep doing it. A little uncomfortable, but <laughs> we'll just keep doing it. Hopefully this new mic setup is not fucked up like last time. Because if it is, then you really wouldn't hear me at all. So that's for irons. Driver's a little different. Obviously you can't go to target. But what instead what you could do, you could just pick a target out there Preferably far away, so it feels more natural. Small target you can, and hit as close as you can to it. And then the second one is where you can also make it into a game, where let's say you have the blue flag and the white flag. You could turn that into a fairway, and then hit your driver at, in between those. And you could also make that a game into a challenge. For team practices, we do that a lot. And we also do that as a team. So if you're in a team and you have like the last shot to win, and you have to hit in the fairway. Obviously that adds pressure. It's very hard to actually recreate the tournament pressure, but that is what you want to strive for. Damn, it is so busy out here today. I wanted to uh, take you guys on a course vlog, but I could always do that in the next video. And here's what you do for chipping. You just pretty much place it down. It doesn't, oh, that's a perfect lie, but it's putting a bad one, but you just want to Pop it down or anywhere around the green, in the rough, somewhere that you normally miss, and then you just want to chip it to the green. Treat it like it's an actual uh, tournament shot. And then you would go up there, and then you would try and put it in. And obviously you could turn that into a challenge as well. So pretty much you just want to turn it into a challenge or a punishment. You just want you just want to add some stakes to it to where you could feel some pressure. I know right now I'm not doing it. This is just for demonstration. I'll tell you guys some putting drills that I normally do. Uh, I'll do it when I'm on the putting green. If you guys have more stuff you're curious about, just leave it in the comments. And then I'll just try and answer them next, either in the comments or just in the next video. But thanks for the question so far. It's a lot more than what I was expecting. All right, what's, your, uh, what's a good drill for irons? What I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna stick the glove under my right armpit. That's also a good one. Yeah, keeping this one under your right armpit is pretty good. Helps you not do this. It is hard to turn though with this one. I really need to work on that. I think it's time to get in some woods though. Hopefully this mic is still on. I should probably check soon. I don't know if you guys think about this when you're over the ball or when you're hitting. When I hit, this is the breathing technique I use. Full inhale, full exhale here. As I take it back, I like to go full inhale. Once I get to the top, I hold it. And then as I, as I finish hitting, that's when I exhale. But up until impact, I hold it. Yeah, give that a try. See if that helps you. Time for driver. I'm going at that green box all the way at the end of the range and my fairway is the blue and white flag. So the most common advice for YouTube growth is to pick a niche and stick to it and really focus on what the viewer wants. And I'm pretty sure I know I can do that for golf and like a lot of educational stuff, but I don't think that's really where I want this channel to go. I like more things other than just golf. I'm not really trying to go pro because, logically, this is my fourth year. I'm not shooting consistently 10 under on any course, and my college ranking is not good at all. And in the previous video, I was talking about 
the whole passion thing with golf. Even though I've been doing it for a long time, I don't think I was ever really passionate about it. I think I just got really good at it uh, young, so I just stuck with it. But I don't think I was really passionate about it. I guess you, for you as a viewer, for like someone who doesn't really know the different levels, it takes to go from D1 to mini, mini tour pros and then to like the PGA tour. I think the best comparison is like my skill level versus like the typical weekend golfer who shoots like in the 80s. My skill level is closer to a weekend golfer than I am with a pro. It's kind of crazy how good those guys are when you see them, when you watch them on TV. It's kind of crazy to see how good they are. And you can't really tell because they just make it look so easy. And you see scores that are like 20, 20 under per tournament. Like and subscribe. <laughs> right now I'm leveraging my D1 college golfer title just so that I mean you guys click on the videos like if I titled it rain session from Ryan who the fuck cares about that so at least having that gives me a little bit of credibility I do want to implement some more stuff I kind of want to go into fashion a little bit I like fashion maybe some tech but I think vlogging is good it's just hard to make vlogs interesting if you're a if you're a nobody for right now, while I still have this title, I'm just gonna try and leverage it as much as I can. And then slowly lead into more fashion stuff, incorporate some tech, see where it ends up. I'm not really in YouTube for the uh, like quick views or viral views or stuff like that. That, that doesn't re even really exist on YouTube. I'm just trying to create a solid foundation for the future. Yeah, after college, I'm just trying to get a job and then save some money, try and start a business. I mean, if, if this becomes really big and I'm able to build something for you guys, then definitely want to do that. All right, let's go to the putting green. Now we're on the putting green. I'll tell you about some putting drills that I do. I like to do Tiger's Gate drill, and that's from, that's about like five feet. Pick a straight putt if you can, and then just put one pretty close here to the side. Don't want them to be too forgiving because you do want your stroke to be accurate at impact. Once you have it all set up, it's pretty good. Just check it. I like to do this 10 times normally, and then after 10, and with your left hand only. After you get 10 in a row with your left hand, try and get 10 in a row with your right hand. It's just trying to get you square and online at impact. If you're even slightly offline, you'll just hit the tees and it won't even go through. Keep your stroke accurate and repeatable. And then just keep doing that a couple of times until you feel comfortable. Another part of the drill is uh, after you do your up and downs, after you chip, like let's say you chip and you end up like here, then you just finish out, treat it like it's a tournament. Finish it out, keep track of your score, you can play with friends. But the main thing is just to have fun with it. You don't want it to suck. And then for long putts, you mainly just want to hit putts above 30 feet and just try and two putt. Like imagine the, this one right here is the far one. You want to hit, putt it. And then wherever it get, gets up to, just finish it out. If you do want to add some stakes, do the same thing, but wherever you are, even if you are, like let's say your ball ends up here on the long putts, just take it back a club. And so instead of there, you're here. And it just makes every putt a little bit harder and a lot less forgiving because if you miss this putt and you miss it like here, you still have to do it again. So you just keep doing that. And so on like the really, really hard putts, I guess you could like four putt. But obviously the goal is not to do that. And then also for testing your speed, you do, you can go all the way to fringe and you pretty much just want your ball to stop as close as it can or on the fringe. But like the very edge of the fringe, so. You kind of want your ball from like 30 plus feet away to stop on this fringe right here. A little bit over, a little bit under is fine. You just want to be as close as you can to that just to test your speed. That's a pretty good one to do if you're at a brand new course for a tournament and you don't really know how fast the greens are. You do that a couple of times to test. Another game we do for shorter putts, same thing as the compass drill. We start with one club out. This is what I also meant by the uh, compass drill. It would look like this. Try and make as many in a row as you can. Or you could also be like, you make all of this once, move it back like a club head. 
and do it again. See how far you can go. Subscribe or I'll watch over you while you sleep.